In example two for section 3.7, similar to example one, but we're multiplying our absolute value x by a fraction and a whole number. This one's a negative one, so we'll see what happens there. So again, graph your original absolute value. I'm gonna do on both. So just kind of get started with that. Okay, that's absolute value of x. This one says one half of the absolute value of x. This is on the outside of the parentheses, so we're effect it's going to have a vertical shrink. It's affecting it vertically, a vertical shrink. And very simple, what you could do is, um, since you're cutting it in half, every number for, so in the original absolute value, when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. Well, now it's 1 half. So when x is 1, when x is 1, y is going to be 1 half of 1. So when x is 1, y is half of 1. When x is 2, y is 1. When x is 3, y is one and a half. Same thing on this side. And oof, a little squiggly, but it's okay. And there's my new graph. The domain and the range don't change for either one of these. The domain, all real numbers for x, the range, y is greater than or equal to zero. y is zero and all of the above. Now for part b, we have a negative two in the front. So first off, we know that when x is one, y is one. Well, what if I multiplied it by a negative two? So when x is one, y is negative two. When x is 2, y is a negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Kind of hard to do it sideways. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and graph. Oops. I would describe this transformation vertical stretch by 2 and reflect on the x-axis. Now the domain and range are going to change here. Not the domain. It's still including all x values. Going negative x, positive x and for infinity. All reals for your domain. All reals. The range, however, this one was y is greater than zero. This one is y is less than or equal to zero. All the y, negative y numbers to infinity, starting and including at the zero, y is less than or equal to zero.